Let's speak to a former presidential candidate who is also an economist and businessman, Dr. Tapae Fashua. Thank you for talking to us on TVC News at 10. Nigerians today are used to Thank quite you. a number of, um, you know, terminologies, call it palliatives, sure P, uh, mm. cash transfer and the rest. We're now hearing about right. interventions in the aftermath of the removal of full subsidy. What do you consider to be economically viable where we stand? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, now, first of all, uh, we should um, get to the idea of a cash transfer or cash distribution. We've done that in the past. It hasn't worked. We haven't seen any salutary effects of uh, some of those uh, payments. And so I think what could work also, um, there's been the idea of um, increasing um, minimum wage, but we should remember that the old minimum wage of 30,000, some states have not been able to pay. Um, and a lot of states, uh, quite a few of them are owing salaries for months as well, even though they haven't even increased to 30,000. And I see the TUC is asking for 200,000, that will not work. And even if it did, uh, if the federal government implemented it, two things, it's going to be very, very inflationary. It's just going to be a case of printing paper and giving people some sort of Zimbabwean uh, trajectory. And, and of course, what, do they, what does the private sector do? Because whatever the federal government agrees upon, the, federal, the private sector must also uh, begin to look at how to pay a minimum wage of that level. So, mm. But however, I think a few things can work ahead. Uh, one of the people who spoke just now talked about putting buses on the road, you know, CNG run buses uh, that compress national, natural gas. Um, in Lagos, they've done a few things around um, uh, electric uh, buses and what have you. Um, you know, I think those are the kind of things that we may have. Um, even, for example, some money may be given to a state like Lagos to expand this metro. Um, anything that takes us away from uh, dependency on petroleum. Uh, could be invested in, especially the transport sector for now. However, it's not only the transport sector. Um, the fuel increase, the prices, or rather the uh, deregulation of prices and, and so on, has also um, affected um, prices across the board, especially uh, we're talking about inflation. So uh, I think that what the NEC will be doing, that's the National Economic Council, is uh, to be thinking in terms of how do we mitigate inflation, how do we ensure Indeed. that inflation doesn't run away. And so there are several strategies that can be put together. Lastly, I'll probably say that in my view, and one of the things I've recommended to them is uh, they should think about payee, uh, pay as you earn. The states should think about that, and they can reduce payee across the board, especially for those who earn low amounts of money and so on. And, also, and the federal government can think about a uh, little reduction in company income taxes just to show that it is business friendly and mm. uh, to also signal to the companies not to lay off staff and to signal to them that, hey, it's going to be good times for them once we get over uh, some of these initial ECOPs. However, the government has done the right thing that President Bola Mentubu has done the right thing no matter how difficult it looks. In the coming days, we probably will be hearing from the federal government as it gets its um, approach uh, uh, through the National Economic Council, but we already have a glimpse of what organized labor is asking for. There's a long list of wage increase, education, revamping the education sector, rehabilitation of moribund refineries, there's the CNG conversion program, you know, amongst others. I'm wondering just how feasible these demands are, and do you think they are tailored made to cushion in the immediate effect um, and impact of the removal of full subsidy? Uh, well, you know, for example, they talk uh, about uh, education, health systems, and so on. But those are ten tangential, if you ask me. They're not particularly going to have immediate impact uh, on, on the issue at hand. However, something like the CNG is something that has been promised even in, since 2016. If you remember well, that uh, the Buhari government actually also removed subsidies in 2016 when the prices of fuel uh, of, of crude oil uh, crashed uh, you know and then but however that was when we increased from 87 to 145 and they promised that the CNG uh, was going to come in uh, government cars were going to be fueled by CNG cars were going to be converted but somehow they they they, they lost the plot and uh, they took it their highs of the ball we are hoping that this time around 
uh, we would actually do something about CNG. If you went to Benin, there's a CNG plant, and um, I've seen a few uh, fuel stations around Abuja that are also powered by CNG. I mean, they have the, the CNG pump and water view. Uh, what it takes is to uh, actually begin to convert cars and provide that bit of um, like a tank for the CNG so that you could load up on both. And I think the CNG is uh, is cheaper. And recently also, even liquefied natural gas and even the one we use, cooking gas, has been reducing in prices. So perhaps that's the way out. You know, but again, all of this is going to make us think differently uh, mm -hmm. going forward. So CNG is great. Uh, investment in uh, electric buses is great. Um, other palliatives along that line, including for what I spoke about earlier on, reduction in PAE, reduction in company income tax, just salutary little, little in the reductions that can impact the people and also uh, also give government the impetus to, to, to chase uh, improved revenues because exactly. if you do that, then you can then enforce uh, uh, compliance, you know, because there's very low compliance on revenue. We, no matter what we do now, we must keep our eyes on the ball. The bottom line is we need to chase higher revenues for government uh, because we're paying too much of our of our of our revenues as, as uh, you know for our debt servicing for now. Uh -huh. uh, so and what I wanted to say was that the government also has the entire field of play. The government can use any tool at its disposal, which is basically every tool at its disposal to solve this uh, initial problem and make people more comfortable. We have to have a raft of uh, call it incentives, call it palliative, call it whatever. Uh, we have to have a raft of them. Uh, the government must now show that having taken this hard decision, this tough decision, mm -hmm. uh, now the people, you know, they're going to people are going to benefit in many time, ways. Time, uh, time is also forward. of the essence. The intervention must come in on Absolutely. time because already uh, Nigerians ex now exchange uh, quite a lot of money for a litre of petrol. Exactly. But it's a good place to live it, exactly. Dr. Fashua, from yeah. our presidential candidate and also CEO of Global Analytics Consulting Limited. Thank you for talking to us on the news tonight.